Uh, let me now briefly uh, tell you a little on the rivers of different states, the Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, the big rivers already we have named Kameng, Suban City. Siang is Changpo. Siang is also known as Dihang. Uh, that's the main branch of Brahmaputra. And it is joined by Lohit. And then there is a beautiful river called Tiraf, which comes from the southern side, not from the northern side. Uh, plenty of indigenous tribes, 26 major tribes and a large number of sub-tribes. They are ethnically very rich and diverse, as you can see from some of the examples. And it's very interesting that if you go to a place like Nagaland, a state like Nagaland, you walk to a couple of villages, the ethnicity changes, their costume changes, their ritual changes, their practices, and very rich biodiversity and cultural diversity, and recognizing the fact that cultural diversity is so much linked to biodiversity. So this is something very unique of this river system, and they are all, as you know at this point, they are all very pristine rivers. Most communities are ethnically rich. They are geographically isolated. In Arunachal, there are only a couple of 100,000 people. And these are, some tribes have only, you know, living 200 numbers or 300 numbers. It's a very small community. And we are really worried now that what happens that tomorrow if these people have to be relocated because of some projects coming up, uh, most likely because they will be withdrawn from their biodiversity locations, maybe the cultural diversity undergo a modification and probably these few tribes will be totally wiped out uh, as extinct tribes in future. So they have their distinct characteristics in language, dress and customs. Also the, mostly they are agriculturists um, and uh, not much of really irrigation. Uh, they mostly do the rain fed agriculture in the Arunachal catchment. <coughs> uh, in Nagaland, there are four major rivers, like the Dhansiri, which originates in the Laisang Peak. There are rivers like Diko, Doyang, and Jaji. Um, we are exploiting in the sense that Doyang is providing a lot of drinking water supply to some of the arsenic affected areas. I am involved with a couple of projects there. Jaji is another river, and they bring in a lot of good alluvial deposit. Uh, for a rich cropping. But as you can see again, Nagaland so far has not intervened their rivers as much like what is being planned in Arunachal. But if it happens again, downstream there will be a lot of implication in terms of this whole alluvial richness of the fertile land. Manipur is known for this uh, beautiful Ramsar site called the Loktak Lake, where uh, very peculiar fumdais are there. In fact, one of their very rich national park called the Cable Lamjao is located on one of the floating island. And the Sangai deer, which, is, which was believed to be extinct, there was a British uh, biodiversity specialist who was studying the Sangai for quite some time. And one fine morning he gave up. He said the Sangais are extinct and he left. And then of course he had his collaborators and few years afterwards, he was informed that again some Sangais were sighted and they all came back. And now we have a few hundred Sangais in one of those uh, bigger, of course, island uh, known as the Cable Lamjao. And this lake, unfortunately, this is a Ramsar site, <coughs> but the Manipur River now brings in a lot of sediment and the city affluent to this lake. And this is again a part of the river system. We're really worried and concerned that what will happen to Loktak Lake in the Manipur Valley. Manipur also have four major river basins, the Surma, of course, Manipur River, U River, and the Lani River. Barak, we have already discussed briefly, comes from the Manipur hills. Then there are a number of tributaries like the Irang, Maku, and Tuivai. Some smaller hydro projects are coming up in these rivers. And it has eight major rivers in Manipur, uh, which actually comes to the, the Loktak Lake. The Manipur River itself, Imphal River, Iril, Nambul, Sekmai, Chakpi, Thobal, and Khuga. These are the rivers which contribute to the Manipur River, and all they are integrated you know, waste load or whatever comes to the Loktak Lake. And right now, there is a huge conservation efforts going on. They are digging up part of the Loktak Lake uh, mm -hmm. to revive some of the fumdais and also make them floatable. You know, people have villages here. People have built houses. And you can assume it's such a fanciful, romantic kind of a thing that you sleep at the night somewhere and wake up somewhere else because already the fumdai has moved a couple of, you know, miles somewhere. So uh, they are beautiful spots, very rich in biodiversity, I'm sure. You would like to go, some of you would like to go someday. Only thing now, at the center of the lake, there's a hill, and because of the insurgency problem, the army has put up a headquarter there. So always starting the guns around, 
I don't know how comfortable a situation that is. Now, uh, they have this problem of sediment loading in the Loktak Lake, and the rivers are also very erosive, so they bring in a lot of this turbulent flow and the sediment to the lake. Uh, it's a concern. It is being restored. To what extent, only time will tell. Mizoram, as I said, is a very peculiar uh, state country linked to uh, Chittagong and through that, you know, like rivers like Karnapuli, which links it to, to the Bangladesh port. Very difficult name. I have gone to these rivers. Klong, you know. Klong is where the whole water supply of Mizoram Aizol city, the capital, comes from. And you will be surprised when you go there. It's like a vertical lift of a couple of hundred meters from Klong to the up there in Aizol to distribute the water to the city. The Aizol city entirely gets water from this river. Klong, Dholeshwari, Tiak, Tere, Turini, even I can spell all of them. Serlui, then Simtuipui, Kolodine, of course, you know, there is a now talk about, you know, connecting through the Bangladesh port through Kolodine. It is being developed with the ADB funding. Then, you know, Khotlang Turipui, uh, which is actually called Karnofuli in Bangladesh. Tuichang, then Turial is called Sonai in Bangladesh. Tuichang, Mat Tuipai, and Khauchak Tuival. These are some of the names in Mizoram rivers. They are, uh, if not main, often they're the only source of water for the people in the state. So these rivers actually have a very important role for Mizoram because Mizoram is much rocky. The groundwater aquifers are very, very deep inside and there are not too many aquifers. So there's a huge dependency for life and livelihood uh, on these rivers. So these perennial rivers in the state, they really fit the last green vegetation of Mizoram and it has a very, very important lifeline. Uh, very peculiar sites are there. Like if you go by this river Tlong, you will see on the side there are a lot of trees, and on the tree branches you will find uh, loads of polythene bags hanging. So when I first went, I was surprised at how these polythene bags are reaching there. You know, are people throwing them? What happens? The Tlong rivers bring out all the city water discharges to the river, and during monsoon this river goes up. You know, and it reaches the trees here. And all the polythenes get struck on the trees. And in the winter, when the river goes down, you see these whole green trees are all dotted with these dirty polythene bags. It looks so ugly. And it's very peculiar. So this is the Aizol city, as you can see on the scrap of the face, one of the most beautiful city. You must go someday. They have beautiful dances. And in the passing, I must tell you, the Mizoram youth community is so, so, so organized. You know, during election, they give time to different political leaders only to talk positive. No negative about no party. You know, when somebody's family, a poor family, somebody dies, this youth association goes and take over the whole household for the next fortnight, providing them food, support, and everything. Nothing to worry about. These are some very peculiar, interesting learning lessons in the tribal societies, which are so strongly, you know, connected to their social system, and that supports. In Mizoram, if you go, if there is a traffic jam, roads are very narrow. Not a single car will move out of his lane, you know. They will wait for hours, but they will wait. There is no such break of discipline. These are some very interesting things which kind of ingrained to the society. Rivers of Tripura, which is more of a plain state than compared to the Mizora, Meghalaya, and Arunachal, they have their own rivers, Gomti, Manu, Khwai, Haura. Gomti is the biggest, very sacred. Uh, they, in fact, they originate, you know, Gomti originate in a place, na name is also Tirthamukh. Gomti is the biggest, very sacred. Uh, they, in fact, they originate, you know, Gomti originate in a place, na name is also Tirthamukh, where actually it's a Tirtha, it's a pilgrimage. Manu enters the district of Maulivi Bazar in Bangladesh. Khwai has its origin in the eastern area of Aharamura Hills. There's a, Tripura doesn't have much hill component except for some tab table land sort of thing. Um, so it finally drains to the Meghna and tribura, tributary to Meghna. And the Haura comes from Boro Mira Hill. As you know, Boro is big, Mura is head, big head hill. Finally unites with the Padma River. This goes to Padma. So Tripura rivers have a direct connectivity uh, to, the, to the main part of Bangladesh rivers. Tipaimukh is in actually in, on that, on the uh, Barak. 
Meghala is the most stable region of northeast, uh, which is the oldest rock, 3,500 million years old. It's a Cambrian rock. So it does not have, you know, it's very different river. It's all rivers with rocky bed, unlike all the other rivers of the northeast, because uh, rocks are very strong and it's not eroded very quickly. Uh, there are a couple of districts like the Garo Hill district. It has rivers, all the names, Sagua, Azagar, Kalu, Dudnai. Many of Dudnai like comes to Assam and finally joins the Brahmaputra. Ringi, Krishna again comes to Assam. Daring, Sanda, Dareng, Bandra and Simsang. Simsang is the biggest of the rivers in the Garo Hill part and it is also partially navigable. Not all of them are navigable because uh, the Silong Plateau, as you know, the Plateau is a very high rise kind of a hill. Uh, on the other hand, on the eastern side, <coughs> where the Shilong Kasizante Hills is there, uh, we have river and these are all Umiyam. Um, um is actually river for Kasi, Umiyam, Umkri, Digaru, Umtru, Barapani, Umiu, Maupa, Kinsiang. Mindu and Mingod. Mindu has a small hydropower project coming up now. And there is a river called Someshwari, which goes to the other flank of Meghalaya, to the Bangladesh side. And there is a complaint here in Meghalaya that, you know, despite being the highest rainfall area in the world, in terms of 12,000 to 18,000 millimeter rainfall, none of this water remains there. They have a huge drinking water scarcity. So, because the water simply falls on the plateau and straight drains either to the Assam part or to Bangladesh. It's all gone. And they have very rocky bed, so there is no retention also in the groundwater. So this is again a peculiar problem of Meghalaya, despite having the rivers. And uh, for your information, among all the northeast states, uh, Arunachal, yes, and now Meghalaya has formed a, you know, uh, what they call a water river basin authority, just last month. And sort of, I am one of the members. And they want to even look at these small rivers also very, very carefully because water is so scarce for them. This is a typical Meghalaya river, as you can see. Look at the rocky bed. Unlike, you know, the Brahmaputra floodplain or the other rivers, this is just a small stream and then going all along the rocky bed. Not much of scope, but you can still see so many uh, livestock dependent on that scanty water. And of course, there is a huge problem uh, of acid mining, where there are coal mining, and it's a high rainfall area. So all the coal has a lot of sulfur and you know, there is a now threat to the Kapili project. There's a hydropower project. All the turbines are all gone because of the acidic water of uh, pH of level of four or below. So <coughs> this is also a very interesting thing I must share with you. Meghalaya has two kinds of deposits. One is the coal and the other is the limestone. Earlier, the acid drainage was still happening, but at a lesser scale. And you know, the limestone used to play a neutralizing role because the acid mine drainage used to flow through the limestone terrain. Suddenly, over the last about five to six years, several cement industries have come up, and they are now digging up the limestone from anywhere and everywhere. So all the limestone that was owned by even private people who had houses, they are digging up their limestone in the backyard, and they're selling it in truckloads to the cement company because it is giving them instant money. In the process, whatever neutralization was happening by the limestone to the acid mine drainage is gone. So it is a more of an administrative problem. And in one of the meetings, we have suggested that as the cement industries, at least after the residual you know, limestone debris that is happening, bring back and restore in the pathway of this acid mine drainage, which will at least neutralize to some extent. This is a big problem, I'm telling you, because the Kapili River water pH is below 4. And it is coming through a coal mine area, so it has got a lot of toxic heavy metals, which are carcinogenic. And Kapili water downstream in Assam, people are drinking and using it unsuspectfully. Probably some of those, we don't have so far established a connection, but this whole carcinogenicity and the, Assam is one of the highest cancer prone state of the India. So nobody really knows that what is happening because of these toxic heavy metals. As I said, uh, Sikkim is the eighth brother of Northeast. And you must be hearing a great deal about the Tista now with this recent earthquake. There are several series of <coughs> hydropower projects are coming up. Uh, Rangit is the other tributary of Tista. And uh, you also know about this Tista issue with the 
Prime Minister's delegation recently that West Bengal was not very, you know, sure about the water sharing of this with Bangladesh. Uh, so it comes from the Sulamu Lake, again a very pristine river. And this tie is a beautiful sight to be seen all along from Siliguri when you go to Gangtok, you actually, the road is just by the this time. So you can see all this beautiful landscape. They are uh, mostly in the mountain terrain. So rivers are narrow, they're serpentine, and they are mostly with the rocky or boulder bed, unlike uh, many of the alluvial rivers that I have talked about. And uh, not navigable because they're all rocky bed. Um, and they have swift current. In fact, Tista is very peculiar. You know, when you go by the Tista, you hear a lot of noise because of the heating of the rocks by this whole flowing water. It's a real live river, you know, very turbulent and very, very uh, torrential during the monsoon. It also have a glacier component fed by the snow beyond Nathula. We had been to Nathula and beyond. So a lot of ice cover and they also contribute and they all come down uh, both during the lean flow and the monsoon flow. Uh, 